Uh, today, let me teach you about an important topic that is the circulatory system. The circulatory system consists of the central pump that's called the heart and the attached continuous network of tubes called the uh, th those are the blood vessels and this heart and the attached continuous network of tubes is called a cardiovascular system. Cardio means heart and vascular means vessels. So it constitutes the cardiovascular system. Uh, the main organ of the circulatory system is the heart which is the central pump. It is uh, located in the thoracic cavity behind the sternum. Uh, so. It, it contracts and relaxes around 75 times per minute. That's around 4,500 beats an hour and, and more than one lakh beats a day. So this heart, it uh, continuously pumps the blood throughout all the tissues present in our body. So this heart, it's actually by the contraction and the relaxation of the heart wall, the chambers of the heart, they get contracted and they're relaxed. Uh, relaxed. So heart wall that surrounds uh, all the four chambers of the heart, it is uh, three layered. This heart wall is three layered. One is, uh, the first one is endocardium and then another one is myocardium. Then the, another one is epicardium. The endocardium is the thin layer of uh, endothelium, which is the thin layer of endothelium, which uh, it lines the chambers uh, from the inner side. It lines the chambers, these chambers, uh, all the four chambers. Then, uh, second layer, that's called the myocardium. Myocardium is a thick middle layer and it constitutes the cardiac muscles. It is the thick middle layer from here inside and it constitutes the cardiac muscles. Those cardiac muscles, they get branched, uh, they have a large number of the branches and those branches, they form the junctions with each other and those junctions are called intercalated discs and these intercalated discs they help the they help to transmit the electrical impulse throughout the heart and help the heart to contract as a single system then there is a third layer called the epicardium epicardium is a thin and a moist layer uh, of epithelium it, it is just in contact uh, with the myocardium in tight contact with the myocardium and this epicardium it has an extension that extension forms the, the that it forms a sac like structure around the whole heart and that is called the pericardium and this pericardium it uh, it it covers the heart it protects the heart from the mechanical injuries and the shocks this pericardium and uh, in between this pericardium and the epicardium there is a space called the pericardial space here i have it is shown it is the pericardium and this is the space this is called a pericardial space this pericardial space is filled with a fluid called the pericardial fluid and that pericardial fluid uh, that it, it will act as a lubricating fluid and it will not let the heart it will not let the heart uh, collapse uh, because uh, the heart continuously contracts and relaxes so that time it will uh, this fluid it will act as a lubricant and it will um, it will help reducing the friction it will help to reduce the friction so heart will not get collapsed or injured um, any sort of the any sort of the inflammation to this pericardium that will give rise to the abnormal condition called the pericardites and that will uh, that will not let the heart uh, to function normally and usually and that needs the medical attention so it was about the walls of the heart we'll talk about the chambers of the heart so there are uh, four chambers in our heart four separate chambers two the four upper two chambers they are called the atria this is right atria and this is left atria or they are also called as auricles and the uh, lower two chambers they are called the ventricles this is right ventricle and this one is the left ventricle so this heart it is a single organ but still it functions as two different pumps it functions as two different pumps so because this right side of the heart it will pump the blood to lungs but the left side of the heart it will pump blood to all the tissues of the body and the right side of the heart it pumps the deoxygenated blood to lungs and then the left side of the heart it will this left side it will pump the oxygenated blood to all the tissues of the body this heart the these chambers uh, the right side and the left side they are separated 
the, they are separated by a muscular partition. Here, this one is called a septum. This septum, it divides the heart into two halls. This is right side and this is the left side of the heart. Now, the left ventricle, this left ventricle, it has the thicker myocardium. Why? Because it has to pump the blood to the whole length of the body. So it has a thick myocardium. It needs to generate more pressure. That's why it has thick myocardium. Now there are heart valves. The heart valves are actually the flap-like structures which are present between the... Uh, there are two sets of the heart valves. Uh, one set is present between auricles and ventricles, right auricle and right ventricle, then left auricle and left ventricle. And those valves are called as the atrioventricular valves. And then second set of the valves that is present just uh, at, at the place where the ventricles are connected with the arteries. And at those places, the valves present, they are called the semilunar valves. And these semilunar valves, they, are, they just, they do not let the blood to flow back into the heart. Now, coming towards the, this uh, atrioventricular value, uh, valve, uh, which is in between the right auricle and the right ventricle, it has got three flaps or three cusps. That's why it is called a tricuspid valve. And this one on the left side, which connects the left auricle and the left ventricle, it has two cusps or two valves. So it's called a bicuspid valve, or it is also called as the mitral valve. So now, uh, semi, now about the second set of the valves, that is the semilunar valve. The semilunar, there are two semilunar valves. One semilunar valve is the pulmonary semilunar valve and another one is aortic semilunar valve. The pulmonary semilunar valve is present, uh, it is present in the, just uh, at the place where the uh, pulmonary trunk, it, it is connected with the right ventricle so it does not uh, let the blood to flow back into the right ventricle once the blood is pushed towards the lungs, the deoxygenated blood. And the aortic semilunar valve is present here, uh, it is present at the base of the aorta it does not let the blood, oxygenated blood, to flow back into the left ventricle. These semilunar valves are just like the, they resemble the shape of the half moon. So they resemble the shape of the half moon. And these valves, uh, this uh, tricuspid and bicuspid valves, they are connected deep into the ventricles by means of the cord-like structures. By means of the cord-like structures, they are called cordi, cordi tendini. They are called the cordi tendini. These cordi tendini, they, they hold these valves tight so that uh, they will not, at the time of the contraction of the ventricles, these valves get closed and they will not let the blood flow back into the auricles. So if any defect in, in these valves, they will leak the blood at the time of the contraction and that will produce a swishing sound and that needs the replacement of the valves uh, by, by the artificial valves. Uh, so it was all about the valves.